This is Vincent Price. Imagine having the gift to see things before they actually happen. Does that scare you? No, you say. Ah, but you're only thinking of the good. Betting on all the sports events, the winner of the daily double. Oh, there's much more to it than that. How would you like to see an earthquake? Or a plane come crashing to an explosive end? Or a, a building on fire where people are unsuccessfully trying to escape? No? Well, if you have this power, you just can't change the station, you see. There's only one station. And what if it happens to be tuned to murder? Remy? Remy? Where are you? Oh, there you are. What are you doing up? It's late. Come back to bed. I can't sleep. What's wrong? Mark. I just saw him do it. I couldn't make out his face, though. It was all very blurry. What? Tell me. What did you see? The strangler. He just killed again. Remy will try to help stop this man, but in the process, she may put herself in great danger. For it's not what she sees, it's what she doesn't see. And that's only the beginning of our story. Mutual Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week, brought to you in Elliot Lewis's production of the Mutual Radio Theater. Our story, Visions of Death, by Joyce and Stanley Director. Our stars, Leslie Woods, Joe Moross, and Jack Edwards. Remy Lindsay, a well-known psychic, has been receiving many visions lately. Visions that she believes has to do with a recent wave of murders. You look terrible. Thanks a lot. Did you get any sleep last um, night? Not much. Any coffee left? I only had one cup. Here, there's plenty. I looked through the morning paper. There was no mention of the police finding another body. That probably means they haven't found it yet. Oh, look at this paper. Nothing but sensationalism. Will you listen to this? The criminal is believed to have a deep-seated hate for women. That's pretty stupid. It's obvious, isn't it? He's not killing men, is he? They have to say something. Oh, why, honey? Why do they have to say anything? Because they have to sell newspapers. <sighs> You're much too idealistic. Why don't you guys have anything new to report? What are you doing with yourselves all day? I'm getting more action out of the media maze than from your department. Chief, this is a very difficult case. They're all difficult. You've been in charge of the hallway strangling from the beginning. We've got one of the best equipped departments in the country, the cream of technology, and yet you've come up with, with nothing, nothing but dead ends. But, Chief, we've been working day and night, checking out as many angles as we can. Chief, this guy is smart. He's not leaving any clues. We're doing the best we can. Don't give me excuses. Give me action. There are people out there who expect certain things from the police department, and we don't want to disappoint them, do we? Look, I like my job. I want to keep it. I do that by keeping the mayor happy. You like your job, you have to keep me happy, and I'm not too happy right now. Find me this maniac. Now I'm going to my office and try to appease those TV and newspaper people. Hey, Harmon, you got a relative you're not too crazy about? Someone we can pin this rap on? Yes, Susie? There's a Mrs. Remy Lindsay on the phone. She wants to talk to you about the hallway strangler. Oh, well, good. Don't keep the lady waiting. Put her through. Pick up the extension. We may have something. Yes, ma'am. Can I help you? Uh, Detective Lucia... Yes, I'm here, Mrs. Lindsay. Uh, did I get your name right? Yes, Remy Lindsay. I was told you were the person I should talk to about the hallway strangler. Uh, that's right. I understand you have information for us. Yes, that's why I'm calling. Good, uh, good, good, good. Now, uh, why don't you tell us what you know? Well, yesterday I opened the window to get some air. I took a deep breath and closed my eyes, and then it happened. I saw the strangler killing another woman. 
What? You what? The victim was around 35 with short blonde hair. She had on a coat with a fur collar. But I'm sorry, I couldn't see the strangler's face too well. Where? Where did you see this? Where did this take place? Well, I, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You just told us you saw it from your window. Now, where do you live? I'm afraid you weren't listening. I told you that I closed my eyes and saw it. I guess I thought you might have recognized my name and that you'd know who I was, but uh, obviously you don't. I'm a psychic, and I saw this in my mind's eye. Now, please don't write off what I've told you, though. I've seen many things before they've happened. Uh, look, Mrs. Lindsay, we're busy down here. I, I don't have time to listen to cockamamie stories. Spin your fantasies for someone else. We just can't please, be... Please, please, Detective Lucia, you must listen to me. I am not some crank who does this as a pastime. I would like to offer my services to the police, and I know that I can be of help. Uh, just a second, Mrs. Lindsay. Harmon, did you ever hear of this coke? Nope. Uh, Mrs. Lindsay, it's very nice of you to want to help, but we I have worked with many police departments with a lot of success. I can give you names and phone numbers if you would care to check on my abilities. Uh, Mrs. Lindsay, it's not necessary because we usually don't call in outside help, but you can leave your phone number with the policewoman you spoke to in case we change our minds. How's that? Aren't you aware of the many studies that have been done on psychic power and phenomena? Uh, definitely, of course. Uh, those things are very interesting. Uh, that's why I want you to leave your number. We may call you. Now, stay on the line, please. Susie, take Mrs. Lindsay's number. Well, too bad. I thought maybe we had something. Well, wait a second. Let's try it out. Close your eyes. Maybe that's what we've been doing wrong. We've been keeping our eyes open. You never know. Maybe I'm psychic. You? You're not psychic. You're psycho. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? Hey, you'll get a kick out of this, Chief. Some dingling call. She, she thinks she can solve this case because she's psychic. Uh, what's wrong with that? You guys need all the help you can get. Oh, come on. That's not help. That's playing games. What was her name? Lindsay. Not Remy Lindsay. Yeah. You know her? Oh, idiot. She's famous. She's helped the New York police, the San Francisco police. She had a couple of best-selling books. She's been on all the talk shows. She's helped to crack some tough cases. You're kidding. What's the kid? You better call her back and apologize. I'm sure you said something that calls for an apology. Remember, we can sure use our help. Anybody's help. Oh, hello, Mr. Fabian. Hello, Miss Lindsay. Hey, are you losing weight? Well, I'm trying to. Does it show? Oh, yeah. You look marvelous. Now, all you need is to have Mr. Fabian do your hair. Oh, my. You don't ever give up, do you? Never. You know what it does for my ego to be rejected by my next-door neighbor? Oh. Why, listen. Women come from all over to have me run my fingers through their hair. Ah, <laughs> uh, here's the elevator. After you, my dear. You, you know, it's cold out. Don't you think you should have worn a jacket? Oh, I'm not going outside. I'm just looking for the manager. I don't know if you realize how much I'm in demand. I can make you into a new woman. Oh, me? I don't want to be a new woman. <laughs> you don't know what you're missing. Uh, here's the lobby. I'll see you later. Oh, Eddie. Yes, Mrs. Lindsay. But where's the manager? I've been calling him since yesterday. He's never home. Can I? Can I help? I wish you could. Would you please just tell Mr. Kessler that I don't have any hot water? As soon as I see him, you can count on that. Thank you. Oh, Oh, uh, there's my girlfriend, Betty. Would you let her in? Right away. Thank you. Hey, am I late? What are you doing down here in the lobby? I have no hot water. Eddie, you won't forget to tell Mr. Kessler. I won't. Come on, let's go upstairs. Aren't you finished shuffling those tarot cards yet? <laughs> Soon, soon, soon. Don't rush me. Okay, now. Let's see what we have here. Hmm. What is it? Is your sister ill? Yes. It just happened today. She went into the hospital. Well, don't you worry. The test she's taking will be negative. She's just run down, and all she needs is rest. You just tell her not to work so hard. I will. Oh, boy, that's a relief. I really feel better. Now, what else? Shh, shh. I see a man. Good. No. No. Not so good. You just met him, and I don't think you should get involved because he's not right for you. Oh, party pooper. 
I finally meet a man I like and you say no. Honey, you don't have to listen to me. You can go and have fun. But just remember what I'm saying. You will get hurt. And you might miss the right one when he does come along. Can you take another look? Maybe you read it wrong. Oh. I really like oh, him. Dear. Oh, excuse me. Hello? Mrs. Lindsay? Yes? Uh, we spoke earlier. This is Detective Lucia. I'd like to apologize for the way that I spoke to you earlier. Apology accepted. I was wondering, uh, could you come down to headquarters where we could talk to you about the hallway strangler case? Remy hurries down to police headquarters, hoping they will take her seriously. And, as I said on the phone, I did see the strangler kill his last victim. She is now lying behind an old spiral staircase in what appears to be a very run-down building. There's garbage and empty beer cans strewn all about. Well, can you see anything else? An address, maybe? Something that could really help us. Oh, no, I'm so... Uh, wait. Huh? Wait a minute. Uh, numbers. I'm starting to see numbers. Um, 13, 50... That's all. Just 13.50. A street. Uh, we, need, we need a name of a street. I wish I could give you more. I know what I just told you doesn't help very much. I'm curious. How do you psychics work? Oh, it's kind of hard to explain. I can only speak for myself, and I don't even know how it happens or why. I don't do anything to bring it on. It just appears or it doesn't appear. I get flashes of images, objects... Sometimes they're very abstract and sometimes not. It's not easy trying to make sense out of it. It's like putting the pieces of a puzzle together, and that's where I need your expertise, to put what I relate to you in some kind of order and make some sense out of it. A very big problem can be misinterpreting what I see, because, after all, things don't appear to me in 2020 vision. <laughs> that's too bad. Uh, have you thought about getting a pair of glasses? Oh, that's an old joke. <laughs> well, I'm an old man. <laughs> uh, now, are there any more pieces of the puzzle you haven't told us about? Well, let's see. I've been uh, seeing a lot of colors lately. Bright colors. Reds, yellows, oranges. Harmony, you getting all this down? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, what do you think all those colors mean? Well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe the strangler is a painter. Because I also see a smock. You know, that's something that a painter would wear. Yeah, but uh, crooks wear those things, too. <laughs> that's right. Well, we're back where we started. There are a lot of painters and chefs in this town. Now, don't you have anything more concrete, something we could check on? Well, I'm sorry. The only other thing I see right now is water. A lot of water. Water? Oh, that's really very helpful. Well, I guess that's it. I want to thank you for taking the time to come down here. I'm sure you'll let us know if anything else pops into that pretty little head of yours. <laughs> Don't take me too lightly, gentlemen. Goodbye. Oh, Mark, why doesn't somebody take me seriously? Why can't they just give me the benefit of the doubt? By anybody, you mean the local police? Well, right now, yes, but I've been through this before. You know it so many times with so many different people. I'm tired of having to prove myself, to keep defending myself. People are basically skeptical, Remy. They have to be shown things. They have to experience it themselves. You're dealing with the unknown, psychic power. And most people are afraid of it. They're unfamiliar with it, so they're unaware. But you can't let them get to you. You know the truth. Let them find it out. Just keep remembering all the good you've done and will do. You're a very special lady. And I'm proud to say, my lady. I love you, too. Not only because you let me be who I am but because you make me remember who I am. You uh, feel better? I feel great. I'm ready to fight the world. That's good, I am. good. But let's eat first. Uh, what are we going to have for dinner? Well, what do you feel like? Well, uh, let's see. Let's watch the little news and see what's going on in the world. And then how about we go out for a uh, uh, Chinese? Sounds marvelous to me. Thank you, Bob, for your informative story on nutrition. 
I picked up a few helpful hints about added chemicals, and I'm sure our audience did. Now back to the news. We have some new information on the hallway strangler case. This reporter has learned that noted psychic Remy Lindsay is now working with the police to assist in bringing this horror to an end. Oh, how did they find that out? The police department has been at a standstill. They've had few suspects and even fewer clues. With the arrival of Mrs. Lindsay on the scene, there should now be some movement. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Mrs. Lindsay's past performance, believe me, it is impressive. She is no newcomer to helping the police solve crimes. From New York to San Francisco... People are indebted to her talents. I'm sorry, Mark, but I just don't want to listen anymore. It's scary listening to somebody talk about you as if you were invincible, perfect. Your news. How did they find out? I don't want any publicity. Things are better for me when nobody knows I'm working on a case. Now, on top of everything else, I've got this extra pressure on me. Uh, hello? Hello. Remy Lindsay, famous psychic. Uh, who is this? You should know who I am. Can't you see me through the phone? Oh, I have no time for games. I'm not in the mood. Who is it? I've got some advice for you. Don't get involved with the police. It could be dangerous for you. Who is this? I think you know. Remy? What's wrong? You look like you just saw a ghost. No. I just spoke to a murderer. Remy and Mark wake up to the sound of their phone ringing. They stare at each other. Memories of the previous call still fresh in their minds. Since Remy is closest to the phone, she slowly reaches for it. Hello? Mrs. Lindsay, Detective Lucia here. Uh, sorry to call you so early. Oh, that's all right. It's the police. Uh, we just got a call. Somebody found the body. It sounds like the one you told us about. Uh, you want to meet us there? It's 1350 Victoria Street. I will be there as soon as possible. Thank you for calling me. Sure. They found the body. It's at 1350 Victoria Street. The same number you told them? Yes, it is, but I didn't come up with Victoria. They had to wait till somebody found the body. Sometimes I get so frustrated, I wish I could see more. I want to see everything. You see what you're supposed to see. Think of it that way. If you saw too much, you might not be able to function. I better get dressed. I told them I'd be there as soon as possible. I'll put the coffee on. Be sure to call me later at the office and tell me what happened. And don't forget to tell them about the phone call. Who is she? Well, we're checking on that now. Not a very pretty sight, is it? No, it isn't. How do you stand it over and over again? Well, it comes with the territory. Mrs. Lindsay, I want to apologize for my attitude. Another apology? Well, you deserve it. I was a little too hard on you. Being a disbeliever makes me a good cop, but as my wife says, it doesn't make me an easy guy to get along with. Your wife sounds like a nice person. She is. You know, I can't get over it. This place looks just like you described it. Have you got any more visions? Oh, well, I... Hello, Mrs. Lindsay. Oh, hello. Uh, what have you got? Well, we checked her out, and she's a doctor on the staff at County General. A doctor? Yeah, that's right. Now we've got a doctor along with a housewife, a secretary, a hooker, a waitress, and a bookkeeper. Well, nothing makes sense. Why? I mean, what's the motive here? They all come from different walks of life. Some are married, some are single. It doesn't follow. There's no consistency. I, uh, I sent the fingerprint man over to her apartment. Good. We'll go over later and see if we can find anything. Uh, excuse me, but don't they wear smocks in hospitals? That's right. Harmon, get some guys on this right away. Check all the previous victims. See if any of them have been sick lately. If any of them have ever associated with the uh, county hospital. Go, go. Go on it right away. Just a second, Mark. I'll be right there. Hang on. I'm coming, Mark. Don't hang up. Oh, Mark, I'm here. I'm sorry. I was going to call you, but I just got in this second. Whew. This isn't Mark. You didn't listen to me. 
You should have stayed away from the police. It's too late now. Your death is coming. Can you see it? Oh, my God. Oh, Mark, please be there. I need you. Mark Lindsay. Mark, please, please, will you come home right away? What is it? He what call- happened? He called again. He told me that I'm next. Did you call the police? No, not yet. Just please come home right away. I don't want to be alone. Okay. After you hang up, I want you to lock all the doors and windows. And don't let anybody in till I get there. I'm leaving the office right now. I will, but hurry. Um, who is it? It's the plumber. I, I come to fix the hot water. Oh, oh, could you come back later? Uh, look, I'm a busy man, lady. I, I can't come back later. If I don't fix it now, it won't get fixed till next week sometime. Hey, look, it's up to you. How about you want hot water? All right. He sounds like a plumber. Yeah, that's a smart move. I'll just lead the way. It's uh, right here in the kitchen. Yeah. You look familiar. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're that sidekick, ain't you? you you're working with the police on that strangler case, right? Yes. Hey, no wonder you wouldn't let me, want to let me in. You, you know, you're taking a big chance. What do you mean? Oh, well, uh, let me in here. I said I'm the plumber, but who knows? I could be the strangler. <laughs> you don't know me. Why do you say that? Hey, look, you've got to be more careful. With all the publicity you're getting, hey, this guy could decide to go after you. Uh, what's one more murder to him? I know if I was that killer and you were going to help put me away, you can bet that I'd get rid of you first. Uh, but, but would you excuse me? Where are you going? Uh, I think I heard somebody at the door. Well, I didn't hear anybody. Well, I did. Who is it? It's Fabian, your neighbor. Oh, Mr. Fabian, it's so nice to see you. Uh, are you in a hurry because I really need a favor? Well, what can I do for my favorite neighbor? Well, you can keep me company until my husband gets here. It shouldn't be too long. You look like you've been doing a lot of worrying. You know, lines are starting to come out. Oh. I've got the greatest cream for that. You just put it on before you go to sleep, and it works miracles. Mark doesn't like me to wear any of that stuff today. Let me tell you something, darling. Men want their women looking good. Now, they may complain about all the trouble and expense, but deep down, they love the results. All right. Can I, can, can I get you a cup of coffee? Or no, thank you. I something? just had some. Oh, I see you're getting your sink fixed. Oh, what I wanted to tell you was that I've been reading all about you in the papers. I didn't know you were such a celebrity. I'll have to read one of your books. Are you interested in the unknown? ESP, psychic phenomena? Oh, it sounds interesting. I don't know that much about it, but I'd like to learn. Can you uh, really see into the past and the future? Oh, sometimes. Truthfully, did you really see the hallway strangler? Rummy, where are you? I'm right here, Mark, in the dining room. You scared me. Didn't I tell you to lock the door? I- I'll explain everything later. Why did you tell me about those phone calls before? Because they only start started happening just now. And you know what? I'm glad. Remy, what are you talking about? Well, I've been getting flashes ever since I spoke to him. He triggered something in me. Something that may not have happened without my talking to him. The images have been getting stronger and stronger. What images? His name, for one thing. It must be. It keeps running through my head. Uh, Douglas, Joel, Douglas. It just runs together like that. Joel, Douglas, Joel. I'm not sure which name is the first or the last. Are you kidding? This is terrific. Harmon, run a check on all the possibilities. This won't take long. We've got a new computer. The quicker you get this guy, the better I'll feel. You and everybody else. Whatever happened with the hospital? Could this Joel Douglas be one of the doctors there? Well, so far it looks like a dead end. We, we can't tie any of the other victims to the hospital. We're still working on it, though. Now, here's an alphabetical list of all the employees and staff for the last year. Let me see it. 
Ah, uh, Douglas, Douglas, Douglas. Mm, no Douglas on the list. I better look under Joel. No Joel either. Well, there goes that theory. Okay, boss. What have you got? There are no Douglas Joels. There are no Douglas J. Douglas. There are no Joel D. Joels. But there are two Joel Douglases. Time to go to work. What are you doing, dear? I'm uh, getting the new insurance papers ready for the airline. Your work must get kind of boring, doesn't it? <laughs> That's the way I like it. I get all the excitement I need from you. And you better keep it that way. I think I'd better go downstairs and do the laundry. We're down to one towel. Oh, wait a while. I'll go with you. You still worried about the strangler? Until he's behind bars? Yes. Well, believe me. It's all over. I have a feeling there will be no more murderers. Besides, the police probably have him in custody by now. Still, I'd rather go with you. Please, Mark, you can't go everywhere with me. I'm a big girl, you know. And I'm not going outside. I'll be right in the building. What good is living in a security building if you can't feel secure? <sighs> okay, but I want you to know I don't like it. Look at that. Eight washing machines and five of them are out of order. It's a good thing I'm the only one down here. I need all the machines I can get. Now, what have we got here? Whites, colors. I wonder, should I do the sheets separately? I bet that's Mark. He's really so sweet to worry about me. Mark, is that you? Who's there? Who is it? Why don't you answer me? <coughs> Vincent Price again. And here's Act Four of Visions of Death. <coughs> Who's there? Answer me. Oh, Mr. Fabian, it's you. Why didn't you answer me? Uh, I, I tried to, but um, I must have a frog in my throat. Nothing would come out. I wonder if I'm getting a cold. Ugh, this building is getting worse and worse. When are they going to fix these machines? Oh, I feel terrible. I filled up all the good machines. No need to feel terrible. You got here first. I would have done the same thing. Did I uh, hear you call your husband before? Yes, I thought that's who you were. He may come down. Your nerves are completely on edge. Working on the strangler case hasn't been very good for you. I know that. What I need is a vacation away from everything. What you need is a new hairstyle. Oh, my goodness. Is that your solution to every problem? Well, why not? I'm for anything that makes people feel better. Remember years ago when a woman was depressed, she went out and bought herself a new hat? Well, today it's a new hairstyle. I really don't want my hair cut. Did I see anything about cutting it? I just want to style it differently. And put it up here a little, uh, sweep it more to one side? Oh, I don't know. I'm used to my hair the way it is. Tell you what, if you don't like the new style, you don't have to keep it. But I do, I can undo it. Oh. <laughs> and for the piece de resistance, there will be no charge. It's on the house. That's some offer. Uh, I won't take no for an answer. My ego couldn't stand it. Hmm. I'll be over in the morning. Well, let it not be said that I was the one who bruised your ego. Hey, I just thought of something fantastic. Don't tell your husband about this. Let's surprise him. He'll come home to a different woman. You'll greet him at the door with a drink, and you'll have dinner by candlelight. Isn't it exciting? Oh, it's so romantic. Don't you just love it? Mark, can you keep a secret? Sure. Mr. Fabian didn't want me to tell, but you know I can't keep anything from you. When I was doing the laundry, he talked me into doing my hair. <laughs> he finally got you. I never thought it would happen. Well, you've got to give the man credit. He doesn't give up. <laughs> Why didn't he want me to know? He wanted me to surprise you. He thought it would be romantic. Candlelight dinner, drinks, me a new woman. Sounds, uh... Very interesting. <laughs> Are you expecting anyone? No. 
I really don't feel like entertaining any company right now. I wish people would call before they come over. Well, just tell whoever it is that we're busy. You want me to do it? No, I'll do it. There's nobody here. Did we keep them waiting so long they thought we weren't home? No. Wait a second. What's this? There's a note on the door. A note? What does it say? It says, your time to die is coming closer. Next time, I'll be on the other side of this door. Why? Why is he doing this? I'm calling the police. This was too close for comfort. You're going to have police protection whether you like it or not. And you're not going anywhere by yourself until this creep is caught. And I don't want any arguments about it. Yes, sir. Police headquarters. Detective Lucia, please. This is Mark Lindsay. One moment, please. Lucia here. This is Remy's husband, Lucia. I'm very upset. The strangler was just here. He left a threatening note for my wife. I don't like it that he was able to get into our building. Were you able to get a good look at him? No, he left a note outside our door. What are you going to do about this? Well, I can assign a man to guard Mrs. Lindsay. Well, how soon can you get someone here? I could have an officer there in about an hour. Please. Uh, how's Mrs. Lindsay taking this? Better than I am. Would you ask him what's happening with Joel Douglas? You don't need attention. Remy is getting on the other phone. She wants to ask you about Joel Douglas. I'm here. Oh, hello, Mrs. Lindsay. Uh, we found one of the Joel Douglases, and he was clean. He couldn't have done any of the stranglings. But we're still looking for the other one. He seems to have disappeared to thin air. Give me a kiss goodbye. Why don't I stay home and keep you company? Oh, honey, you can't. Remember, Mr. Fabian is coming over. And you're not supposed to know about it. Well, I'll stay in the bedroom. He won't even know I'm here. Oh, I know you. After ten minutes, you'll go stir-crazy. It's better if you go to work. How can I work when I'm worried about you? There's no reason for you to worry, honey. There's a policeman right outside our door. Now go on, go to work, and get your mind on something else. <sighs> I guess you're right. I'll call you later. I love you. I love you, too. Hello? Good morning. Just calling to make sure you're up. I'm up. When are you coming over? Well, I've got a little problem with my door. It's stuck. I can't get it open. Oh, well, you, if you want to cancel, we can do it another time. No, of course not. When a problem arises, you solve it. So, since we happen to be next-door neighbors, all I have to do is go out on my terrace and climb over to yours. Problem solved. All you have to do is open your sliding glass door. Well, isn't that dangerous? Oh, not for me. I'm very athletic. Just meet me outside. If you insist. Here, Emmy, take this. It's my bag. It's got all my paraphernalia. Be careful. I'm always careful. Ah, see? I'm fine. Now we can get started. All right, where would you like to work? Uh, let's see. Well, the kitchen would be the best place since I'll be washing your hair. Everything else I have to do can be done at your kitchen table. Can I get you anything before we start? Some coffee? No, thanks. I don't want anything. Here, uh, put this on. That's a smock. So? <laughs> Why are you looking like that? All hairdressers use smocks. Uh, when was the last time you had your hair done? What? Oh, I, I don't remember. Here, now. Put your head under the faucet. It's time to wash your hair. Uh, what kind of shampoo is that? It smells wonderful. Ah, uh, <laughs> that's a trade secret. That's how I keep my customers coming back for more. Oh, well, it certainly feels great. I can see how people can get hooked on it. You have beautiful hair. Thick, rich. Thank you. I try to take care of it. The only thing I don't like uh, is the color. Have you thought about changing it? You know, you have such light skin. Uh, you would look smashing as a blonde, even a redhead. I didn't know that you dyed hair. Well, there are many things you don't know about me. I'm the best colorist in the business. I fix all the mistakes made by the so-called geniuses. There we go. All finished. Colors, water, smock. Remy, come over here. I'm waiting for you. The 
Forget something, Mr. Lindsay? No, I just decided to come home. Has uh, the mailman been here? He just left. Oh, good. Bills and junk mail. Hey, what's this? Eddie, uh, do you know anything about this? What? This letter. It's addressed to a Joel Douglas. Oh, the mailman must have put it in your box by mistake. Here, uh, I'll take care of it. It's addressed to a Joel Douglas. There's nobody in the building with that name. Oh, that's right. I guess you don't know. Joel Douglas is the real name of your next-door neighbor, Mr. Fabian. He told me he changed his name. You know, hairdressers, they have to be fancy. I guess he figured Joel Douglas didn't sound like a hairdresser. Call the police right away. Tell them what you told me. I've got to get upstairs. So, now you know who I am. I tried to warn you, but you wouldn't listen to me. Now I have to kill you. No, you don't. You don't have to kill me. We can work this out. I can get you help. You're the one who needs help. There is a policeman right outside that door, and you'll never get away with it. You'll be caught. And it's all your fault. You have to pay for that. Officer! I think you're going. Come back here. You're a bad girl. Just so you don't make any noise, I'm going to put this over your mouth. Oh, you women are all alike. Stop squirming. I know I'm hurting you, but it'll only hurt for a little while. And then it'll be all over. Officer, officer, my wife is in danger! Get your gun out! Stop where you are! It's all over, Mr. Fabian! How are you feeling, Mrs. Lindsay? Much better, thank you. Why did he do it? I don't know. He hasn't told us. He may never tell us. He may not even know himself. I never would have thought the connection was that all the women had their hair done by the same man. Do you think there'll be any trouble getting a conviction? I don't think so. We found more than enough evidence in his apartment. Uh, listen, uh, if you ever want a steady job that doesn't pay well, uh, we could always use another detective like you. Why, thank you very much, Mr. Lucia. I'll remember that. <laughs> The Mutual Radio Theater is brought to you five nights a week at this time. Tonight's original radio play, Visions of Death, was written by Joyce and Stanley Director and produced and directed by Elliot Lewis. Your host was Vincent Price. Our stars were Leslie Woods, Joe Maross, and Jack Edwards. Featured in the cast were Frank Campanella, William Martell, Lou Krugman, James McCallion, and Diana Hale. The Mutual Radio Theater theme was composed by Nelson Riddle. John Harlan speaking. The Elliott Lewis production of Mutual Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI.